Jeremiah chapter 45. The word that Jeremiah the prophet spake unto Baruch the son of Neriah. This is this is the only one that really accompanied Jeremiah. Uh, we've seen a few times in the Bible with Jeremiah, working with Jeremiah. We had written these words in a book at the mouth of Jeremiah. So looks like Beirut. Baruch is part of the writer of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is not the writer himself. In some passages, even one whole chapter we read, that Baruch was the writer. And he wrote from Jeremiah's mouth. And we read in another chapter that not only did he write from Jeremiah's mouth, but he wrote what God has speak, spoken to. The inspiration of the Bible. You know, people say, well, men wrote the Bible. Okay. Well, here's a man writing from a man writing from God. Where's that argument? They don't even know where that argument is. Yeah, man wrote the Bible. Man is the pen and the Holy Spirit is the ink. So here's this gentleman that helps Jeremiah. At the mouth of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Now this passage is dated. If you don't lay out in a piece of paper the kings of Judah, you would find what at what point this king lies in, how far it is from the last king of Judah. You can do that on your own. We're just going through the chapters and studying. But this point it is a message to Baruch. Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto thee, O Baruch. So here's a chapter, short as it, short as it is. It's not written to the Jews. It's not written to the Gentiles. It's not written to the world. It's not written to the church. It's written to one man. And one man alone. And we've already seen another passage. Not a chapter, but a few verses that were written to an Ethiopian eunuch. That helped Jeremiah. you got to realize, when you get men like Jeremiah who stick their necks and their lives out there. What you get from this very short chapter, short passage about the Ethiopian eunuch, that when you help someone that's serving God, you're going to be rewarded. Now, they did not take part in far as in Jeremiah's ministry, but Baruch did write the word, and he did preach before the people, and he did read before the princes the word of God, But as far as 45 chapters, Jeremiah is mostly mentioned. This, is, this guy is only mentioned a few times. We don't even know the name of the unit. No, I don't blame him. Maybe we do. I'm not sure. The name is mentioned. But what we learn from chapter 45 is you can have the littlest part in someone's ministry. It may not be important. It may be nothing. But God recognizes you for your work. And he says, Thou didst say, Now what we're reading now, This is what Baruch, Baruch has said. We don't know what he said until God says what he said. Now here's a guy who grabs a pen, he, He's going to write from Jeremiah's mouth, And Jeremiah says, Thou didst say, Now you wonder how Baruch got his name, a little lump in his throat? What did I say? See, the thou is the Baruch. This is his word. Woe is me now. Can you imagine what Baruch is feeling right now? Okay. For the Lord has added grief to my sorrow. Not only has he got sorrows, but he said, Lord, you're, you're adding grief. And Baruch is probably, yeah, I did say that. Realizing the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Even my words in Matthew records, by every idle word shall we give an account. That's another thing we learned in this short chapter. You better realize God is recording what you said. And he's telling it to the prophet. No longer secret. Now your words may be secret before another man on this planet. In this lifetime. And lifetimes to come. But you better realize that the white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ, your words will be printed and will be announced. 
and will be said. And however God will reveal it, it will be revealed. You better get that. You better know that. You better know that when, when you visit a church for the first time that someone has invited you out there and a preacher gets up and starts quoting your life. It wasn't somebody that invited you. It wasn't the family that said come to church. It is God speaking to the man of God. You got to realize when you go to church, oh, that was a boring message. Oh, that may have not been for you, chapter 45. That may have been for a Baruch sitting in the congregation. And we learned the other night, now maybe it may not be possible, maybe so. And somebody says, oh, yeah, I'll be in church in the morning. We realize that God will preach a message if you're there or not. If you open up, oh, yeah, I'll be there Sunday morning, 1030, okay. And when we heard a message directed to what this guy had said to us on the street, I don't know if he was there or not, but God spoke. Now, he was there, he learned something that he didn't know. If he wasn't there, he missed something that he didn't know. God is speaking to a man of God about a person's life. Hear his voice. I fainted in my sighing. My sighing. He's sighing. And found no rest. I am just miserable. That's what he's saying. I'm just... At what? What is the grief? What is the sorrow? Who knows? Thus shalt thou say unto him. All right, Jeremiah, this is what you just said. Thus say, the Lord saith this, thus, Behold, that which I have built will I break down. Jerusalem. That which I have planted, I will pluck up. What is that? That's the vineyard. Scripture with scripture. Even this whole land. Of what, Judah? Scripture with scripture will tell you who he's speaking about. And it looks like the fact is that, Baruch, this ain't personal against you. Don't take it personal. I don't know. But God steps in, oh, I got grief, I got sorrow, I got sighing and all that. And God says, and he speaks about the judgment that he has done upon the nation. And seekest thou great things for thyself? What do you want, Baru? I want great things. <coughs> Look at that. Baru was looking for something great. What was the great? I don't know. I can't say. And if I were to say I know, I'd be a liar. Seek them not. Whatever the Baruch is looking for, God says, stop it. For behold, I will bring evil upon all flesh, saith the Lord. <laughs> you can maybe read between the lines if you want. What well, has to do with the judgment upon Jerusalem it has to be upon the people who are sinning against God. But thy life, see now see thy life, compared to someone else's life. Thy life will I give unto thee, Baruch, you're going to live. You're not going to die in Babylon. You're not going to die by the Chaldean. You're not going to, what we've been reading the last two chapters, 43 and 44, you're not going to die in Egypt. Now remember when we talked about that little contradiction that all those that go down to Egypt are going to die. And he said in verse 28 of 44, Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt. Remember we read that? Well evidently Baruch is going to come out of Egypt. He's not going to die. But remember we talked about he didn't go down to Egypt. Jeremiah didn't go down, down to Egypt. The king's daughters didn't go down to Egypt. Men and women did not go down to Egypt out of their own will. They were forced by a military, by an army. Baruch was, was they said, this guy, you know, he caused Jeremiah to go against us. So they grab him and take him down to Egypt. And God says, I'm going to give you your life. You're going to live. 
through all this. For a prey in all places whither thou goest. Now what's that mean? You're not going to gather money. You're not going to gather gold. You're not going to gather clothes. You're not going to go out for prey. You're not going to go out and spoil. Your reward, your credit is not something big or great. Don't seek those things. Your reward is going to be your own life. You're going to live. How's that? So what is the greater of things? What is the best of things? Having life. You can't serve God dead. I'm going to die for Christ. And that's it. That's all you can do then. You're done. Now, in some ways, yeah, you still get credit for people that you got involved with missionaries and, and witnessing and those people. You get fruits from them. You get fruits for support in a missionary work, yeah. You, but pretty much, when you're dead, your life is dead to new things. You're not going to be able to do anything more new. If I were to die today, right now, all right, all the Saturdays I preach at the at the uh, farmers market, all right, maybe glory to God, may I get fruit from the, from that. People get saved or grow in the grace of God. Say, hey, I'm going to go home and do what that guy's doing in my own city. Praise God, warn the glory. If I were to die right now. There will be no more new Saturday at this farmer's market. There will be no more new fruit. I'll be done. I can't witness to anybody else. I can't put gospel tracts in the school I'm going to. I can't leave gospel tracts at work. I can't go to the, the little stores around my job and leave gospel tracts. It's done. You know what the greatest part of my whole thing today, even though I got sickness and problems and, and worries and concerns, just like Baruch has, I got the same problems he's got. I've got life. I'm a saved, born again Christian. I have a Bible which can lead somebody to salvation or lead someone who is saved to grow in grace of God to be pleased with God. There are two ways I can please people today by living. I can show them the way, the truth, and the life of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ for them to be saved. Or I can show one that is saved what God expects for him and teach them to do that God will be pleased. That's what it comes down to. And then when I die, that's it. My ministry is over. I'm done. Baruch is giving life to whatever he can do afterwards. What is it? I, we're not told. I hope he lived for God. I hope he did something for God. I hope he continued to help Jeremiah when, when you know, the book goes silent on their life and all that. But here's something that some people want in chapter 45. They want a whole entire chapter of the Bible written to them. And here's a chapter such. I've seen your troubles. I hear your big mouth. I'm telling you what happened. Don't go after the big things. And I'm just going to give you a lot. You're not going to get gold, silver, or anything like that. You're not going to have big homes. You're not going to have cars. You don't say anything like that. I'm just going to give you your life. And what is that life consisted of? What is Baruch's life consist of if he stays in Judah? Destroyed walls, no temple, and burnt down homes. Anything that he does once the Babylonians come, because this is earlier, this chapter jumps back in time, they're not in chronicle, chronicle order. What, later on, what would happen would be the fact is that whatever Baruch does after after Babylon, the Chaldeans come and destroy Jerusalem. He's got to restart his whole life all over again, which I have done two or three times. He's got to start his life over. And usually when you do that, you pretty much start down in the dust, but pretty much you have, you've got some things, but not all things you started with in the beginning. His life is rewarded for him for doing what he had done what he could for Jeremiah. And it wasn't much, but he, that's all God called him to do. 
Listen, if you're in a nursing home, you can't do nothing. The best thing you can do is pray. You got all time to pray. And that's all you can do. You can't get out of bed. You can't speak because of age. You can't see your Bible because of it. Whatever. If you're limited, stuck in bed at home, if the only thing you can do is pray, that's the best God expects from you. And you got to know that. And you got to learn that. And you got to stop your belly aching. Because this is what Bar River is. He's belly naked. We all belly ache. We all complain, but we've got life. But more interesting, more that we have eternal life. We're worried about the destruction that's all around us, this little speck of time that we live, and we forget what the eternal life that we got. And we can do more than Baruch has done for Jeremiah. We've got a completed Bible. We're told by God to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. We're told to, to help Christians grow. We're told to pray for others. But we learn that God sees our, or God hears what we say. And he will sometimes have the preacher repeat what you say. He hears our belly aching. And he will grant you for doing something, for helping what you've done. He will reward you.